Welcome to The Lava Spurt, the weekly offshoot of The Lava Flow. Channeling the flow of information to the libertarian, anarcho-capitalist, voluntarist and agorist community. Brought to you by my per episode donors. Thank you. Here's your host, Roger Paxton. Mark Clare from Lions of Liberty had me on the show Libertarians in Living Rooms Drinking Liquor this week. And man, was it ever a blast. It's always a great time talking libertarianism with these guys. If you're not listening to their content, then what's wrong with you? We also did a bonus episode after this show that only patrons of Lions of Liberty and of my show can get access to. I've already uploaded that episode to my Patreon feed, so if you want to get your hands on that, and trust me, you do, become a supporter of my show at thelavaflow.com slash support. Without further ado, here's the episode. Enjoy. What's up, Lions? For as little as $5 a month, you can help this show to grow while also getting access to our exclusive Pride content, which includes shows like Conspiracy Corner, Degenerate Gamblers, Special Interviews, Lions of Liberty Roundtables, and much, much more. So check that out. Help us grow at lionsofliberty.com forward slash support. We're playing their game. We're playing by their rules. And we're wondering why we're banging our head against the wall constantly trying to get libertarians on the ballot, trying to get libertarians elected. And we're getting fucking nowhere doing it because we're playing by their rules and we're letting them dictate to us how we're going to take our freedom back. Fuck that noise in the neck. Welcome to the Lions of Liberty podcast. Here's your host, your guide, your shining beacon of liberty. Mark Claire. All right, folks, and I, I'm just going to get right into things. That, that's kind of what I did last episode. I just started talking, not last episode, but last time we did this, which we're doing today, which is, of course, Libertarians in Living Rooms Drinking Liquor, where I bring a bunch of Lions of Liberty buddies or other buddies like I have today, and we drink and we talk liberty, and we have no other plan than that. And uh, I've, of course, got uh, with me here, first of all, no, before I bring in people, I'm going to bring in my drinks, because I always forget to tell everybody what I'm drinking, and I think Howie's going to be really happy with what I'm drinking, at least. Odie might not love it as much, but uh, I'm, as my beer, I've got two drinks. I'm drinking some PBR, wonderful beverage. And uh, because I am in training for the upcoming Whiskey Challenge, and we'll talk about that, exactly what that is for non-Pride people. They already know all about this, but uh, non-Pride people can learn a little bit more about what the Whiskey Challenge is a little bit later. But first, um, I am drinking some wild turkey in preparation for this event, and I'm going to bring in the captain of my Whiskey Challenge team first, from Leesburg, Virginia. Not from there, but he lives there now, to be clear. He is the godfather. He is the man who first started whispering in my ears about, uh, well, about, about a lot of weird things, to be honest. But the important one that's relevant today were about the ideas of liberty. He is, of course, the godfather himself, Howie Snowden. Mark, you make me proud. And I don't mean all this libertarian stuff, the fact that you're drinking wild turkey right now. Had I known, okay. I'd be on the wild turkey train myself. But as it is, I'm drinking a, uh, a local beer here from the... Old Ox Brewery in Ashburn, Virginia. It's called Golden Ox. It's, uh, Just the beer. No whiskey, right? No, no. You don't need as much training as I do. You know, I, I try not to drink whiskey on the podcast ever since that one Halloween episode we had. <laughs> And I just got hammered. Just went. Just got things hammered. Just went crazy. Wish things didn't go out to the masses that I said that I that I said. But you know, what you gonna do? You know, and I don't even remember what show that is. So I, I encourage everyone to go to lionsofliberty.com slash pack podcast. That's where our full archive is. And just go listen to every Halloween episode and see if you can figure out which one we're talking about. There's only like three of them. Damn it, I shouldn't have mentioned It'll, it'll be worth it. <laughs> now <they're, laughs> See, the first thing you do is point people to your worst work. I love it. Um, I also have, of course, with me the host of the weekly Felony Friday, that hard-hitting look into the broken criminal justice system. He is the one and only – I think he's the one and only – Maybe not. John Odermatt. What's up, Mark? I'm actually not the one and only John Odermatt. There's like five of us yeah. in America. So <laughs> See? What do I know? So, but I do have all the uh, the social medias locked up. So fuck you, other John Odermatts. I got it. <laughs> you guys ain't getting shit. <laughs> but, uh, right, and, and last – oh, sorry. I didn't yeah, let me – yeah, my, my beer. But See? also I wanted to say with, with Howie, he was talking about his most drunk episodes. 
I think his most drunk episode was one we did with Johnny Rocket when uh, I don't even remember when it was. Johnny Rocket was maybe down at like the LP convention or something. And Howie just like throughout the episode, by the end of it, I couldn't even understand what he was saying. It was glorious. I loved it. But this could be true because I don't even remember doing that episode. <laughs> I, I know I know I was on the Johnny Rocket launch pad, but I don't remember ever doing one with him on our show. So yeah, that yeah. that may be it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And that, the, would have aired, that would have been the one that aired right after the LP convention, I think. I think I know. What you're yeah, talking about, yeah. So. Those were dark beer, days. I'll link to all this stuff in the show. Those were dark days. days back then. Dark days. Gary Johnson, Bill Weld, who wouldn't be trashed? Well, the, the darkness might try to return. Well, we can talk about that a little bit later as well. And the beer I'm drinking, uh, it's a, a special beer provided by one of our listeners. I think you and Brian were drinking uh, – one of his beers a couple weeks ago, a couple of LILDLs ago, I'm drinking from Brickstone Brewery, uh, our supporter, or actually one of our new Pride members, Kyle Evans, joined the Pride recently. Yeah, Kyle. Um, it's called, it's an APA, so it's a, it's an, a, yeah, it's an American Pale Ale, and it's delicious. It's, uh, I would compare it to actually a beer I'll probably be drinking next. It's almost like a Bell's Two Hearted, but I like it a little bit better. It's a little smoother, I think. Not as alcoholy tasting, but still packs a punch with uh, six point two five percent alcohol. So it's delicious. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. Check out the Brickstone Brewery. Hey, hey thanks for sending me some of that, Odie. Hey, I was I talked <laughs> to you about that earlier. I'm waiting. I on know, I know. In, the, but, the United States yeah. Postal Service screwed me again. But yeah. you know what? Thank God a bottle of the absinthe order from Czech Republic never busted it in shipment. <laughs> Back when it was like really, really not allowed here. All right. Well, enough about us and our booze, because we have a very, very special guest with us today. He's uh, someone I talk to at least uh, every month on the League of Liberty podcast, which is, of course, available almost exclusively. I don't want to say exclusively to Pride members, because supporters of his show, the Lava Flow podcast, can also get access to it, as well as uh, supporters of Johnny Rocket Launchpad and Chris Spengel. I am, of course, referring to the host, the founder, the creator, the... Um, I don't know if he edited the show. I think he has people to do that. But uh, he does just about everything over at the Lava Flow podcast, the one and only Roger fucking Paxton. Roger fucking Paxton, president accounted for. Gentlemen, how are you? We're doing great. Fantastic. So, so I have to say this is the first time I think I've spoken with Howie. Howie, it's great to talk to you. Um, the godfather of liberty. That's great. Um, so weird. Yeah. The godfather of all liberty. Right. <laughs> hey, it's good to some have another. Some people think it's Ron Paul. Some people think it's Ayn Rand. No. It's good to have another bearded liberty hero on the show. Nice. Well played. And John, I need to thank you for your um, present of a couple of hats. <laughs> um, it was a present. It was not a bribe. It was absolutely a present for our. Uh, I think it's called a kickback. It is a well, gift. It was a gift. <laughs> it was a gift. And I uh, enjoyed those hats very much. Thank you, John. Awesome. And Mark, it's always a pleasure to be talking to you, sir. And I am drinking a uh, Dow Winnie 15 year old single malt scotch. So, Ooh. you know, there's a reason they call wild turkey wild turkey. It's because it's distilled from wild turkey piss. <laughs> and um, so that's why I'm drinking the real stuff. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why this whiskey challenge can't be something good like Blanton's, but. Well, why don't we why don't we at least describe what this is? Because this is something only Pride members were privy to right now. But uh, I guess this is a good place to start since Roger is on the show. All right, as as you guys have know, as people have been listening to the show know, we have been working hard to make sure we can get to Porkfest. One of the big goals we had with the show is to go to some libertarian events, really get face to face with people. I mean, it, it's wonderful talking to people on Skype, but at some point, it's good to actually get out there in person, start networking. And the great thing about doing stuff like that is we can produce content on the scene at these events, and that's what we plan to do at the Porcupine Freedom Festival this year, which is taking place. Roger, when is it taking place? Pork Fest this year is June nineteenth to the twenty fourth. That's Tuesday through Sunday. Also in East Buttfuckville, middle of nowhere, New Hampshire. It is in the I'm sure it's it is in the lovely. White Mountains of New Hampshire, one of the most beautiful spots I've ever been to in my entire life. The uh, entire campground overlooks the White Mountains. It is just you cannot look anywhere in that campground without a gorgeous vista. It's incredible. I am super excited, and I hope. A lot of our listeners can make it out there and help me celebrate my 39th birthday last year as a young man, June 24th. 
So uh, not only your last year as a young man, but your last, I mean, probably your last last year as a uh, single man. You know, I, I don't want to <laughs> we don't have a crystal ball. There might be another yeah. divorce coming. Probably not. I'm, I'm going to say there's not because <laughs> Howie's also going to be getting married later this year. So That's it's a, right. it, not only can you hang out with the Lions of Liberty. And I guess this is a good part. I, I, I guess it's pretty obvious by now, but we have not actually quite hit the goal. Now, our goal was to hit one thousand dollars a month to send us to Pork Fest. However, because things are going well, because the momentum is all heading in the right direction we're very confident that we're going to be hitting that mark in the next few weeks but and because of that confidence we have decided to purchase our tickets to pork fest so all six lions of liberty uh, of course the three of us on this show me howie and Odie, as well as brian who hosts electric liberty land which you can hear every single wednesday he has been absolutely killing it over there and then our our um our good old conspiracy researcher himself rico and our token black libertarian jb lubin <laughs> he's actually our token frenchman in reality, uh, they're all going to be there with us, and that's great because we're all friends from college. We all went to Penn State together. Uh, that's where the Lions and Lions of Liberty comes from. We've known each other for uh, actually now at this point, literally, I've known Howie for 20 years at this point, and, and Brian about the same. Um, met, met Odie and JB a little bit later. So this is uh, pretty crazy that we're all going to be able to get together in the same place by going to Pork Fest, and that's thanks to you guys. So we went ahead and bought our tickets, even though we have not quite hit that $1,000 a month. Yet, and that's why we need you guys, if you haven't joined the Pride yet, for as little as five bucks a month, you can get in there and get access to all of our exclusive audio, which I'm not going to tell you about. You know why? Because Roger Paxson's going to tell you about it. Because Roger had some great compliments about the uh, Lions of Liberty Pride content on the last League of Liberty podcast, which is, of course, just one of the many exclusive shows Pride members get access to. Roger, what do you think? You are a member of the Pride. Why don't you tell everybody about uh, your opinion on the content that you get from that Lions of Liberty Pride membership? I started off as a $5 member of the Pride, but I had to bump it up to $10 because it is literally, as I said before, one of the best values on the internet for your dollar. I mean, the amount of content that you guys put out is bar none top notch. Um, and I am proud to be a uh, pride member and I'm proud to have you guys come into pork fest. I cannot wait to meet all you guys. Awesome. Yeah. Very exciting. We do work hard to constantly get out new content. Uh, we have so many little, little spinoff shows. We have the degenerate gamblers podcast where, uh, Odie, Rico and Brian talk about all things, gambling, all things, Liberty and all things, nonsensical bullshit stories. It's the best a part. Lot of the last one was a blast. Yeah. <laughs> the last one was a blast. Not only do we have stories from the present, cause Rico is always getting into uh, trouble or, or something. He's, he's always has issues in life that, that end up being hilarious. And, uh, you also get to hear some old stories. Uh, they did that about a 30 minute show. I'm not even sure if you discussed gambling, uh, but it was mostly stories, some really hilarious stories from our old college days, our old drinking days. So you really get insider access that you don't get anywhere else. All for as little as five bucks a month. You can give us more like Roger does. And if at the, the, those higher levels, you get some free t-shirts at the $15 level, you actually get, um, Howie's news email every single day you get uh, a, our curated list that howie spends his mornings just killing out um the, the best content putting the best content out there for us and that's basically where we get all of our information everything you hear us talking about comes from howie's uh, resources and um you know without giving away too much howie does uh, gather intelligence for a living you might say so i, I don't really I, I, used I used to i used to you used to you have experience in the field is my, is my point yeah i do cybersecurity stuff now i don't no more intel work for me. Well, no, you do do intelligence. You do Lions of Liberty. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. Open source. Yes. So the point being, you know, we are very confident that we're going to continue to grow and hit that thousand dollars a month, and we wanted to make sure we got there. So we went, went and bought the tickets, but tickets are only one part of this, folks, because we have to get there. Uh, most of us live, or half of us at least anyway, live entirely across the country, or me and Brian anyway, and everybody's got to travel a little bit, so we need some rental cars. Uh, the airport's actually not super close to Porkfest, so we'll, we definitely need some cars. We need airplane tickets. Um, we need lodging. These are all things we have to purchase still. So uh, we really do need to hit that $1,000 a month mark and higher and higher because the higher we go, uh, the more events we can go to. You know, We'd love to go to the Libertarian National Convention. We'd love to go to there's Freedom Fest in Las Vegas. The more money we get from you guys, the more you're going to get us going to these other events and producing great content at those events. So we're super excited about it. We've already discussed uh, just before the show, I was talking to Roger. We're planning uh, at least a few show recordings at Porkfest and 
and um, we're definitely going to do a Libertarians in Living Rooms Drinking Liquor show. Um, Brian might do an Electric Liberty Land there. Uh, maybe we'll do some interviews. Depends on who's there and who we line up, things up with. But again, it's all up to you guys. The more you put into this, the more that we can do with and it. And just to be clear, those are going to be live recordings in front of a studio audience. So anybody who's yes. at Porkfest is, can sit there in the media room while these guys are recording their show. And I'm sure that you guys are going to get audience participation as well. I mean, if you don't, you're a fool. Because, I mean, that's part of the real fun about doing it in front of an audience is really getting their participation. So uh, definitely. so definitely come to Porkfest and check this out. Yeah, we're, we're super excited about it. Um, Odie, any, any, any thoughts on anything? <laughs> I had nothing else. All I had planned was pump pump for Porkfest and beg for I money. have zero thoughts. No, just kidding. Yeah, show's over, guys. It's really been fun. <laughs> just kidding. Now, you guys were talking about the Whiskey Challenge before, and as the only oh, yes. person who's on the show right now who's ever done a Whiskey Challenge, I can kind of explain the rules, the ins and outs. Uh, for the listening audience, I, out I, I, so, I might uh, not have done a, an, an official whiskey challenge, but I feel like I've put myself through many whiskey yeah, challenges. Yeah, oh, Howie, so, Howie, you, you, you'll, so have I don't know, your, you'll have time for your. I don't rebuttal. know. If, have, I don't know if this counts as a whiskey challenge, but when you back when you were pledging, you know, I was a pretty nice guy to all the pledges, but there were times when I had to not pretty be. Nice guy. So whenever there were those times when I had to not be, me and Trent before we met with y'all would finish a bottle of Windsor Canadian whiskey. Split it in half right before, just just so we were you know on point and ready to deal with the, you and all your bullshit. So I don't know if you call that a whiskey challenge, but several times during the years, just about probably you know every week, most months, half a bottle of whiskey. So yeah, I've never done yeah. your Jim Beam whiskey challenge, but I'm, Jim I'm Beam. Not, I'm, I'm not doubting. I'm not doubting your whiskey drinking capabilities. Let, let me just say before I get into the details here, probably a lot of you listening to this as I describe it might be disgusted. You might think, oh, my God, how did nobody die? You might say you guys are lunatics. You might say you're alcoholics. I would like to just set the record straight and say, no, we're not. We're just professional drunks. So that's why you go to college. You learn how to drink professionally. And so I guess Rico actually came up with the idea, but he graduated before we ever did one. And I think the first one we did, we had like five or six teams. And what it was originally was each team had a call it a handle but you know uh i guess it's what a gallon of of whiskey uh jim beam was what we used for consistency purposes so everyone was drinking the same whiskey jim beam bourbon and you were allowed to drink uh coca-cola with it now today if i was doing it again i would not make that stipulation but back then that's what it was and the first team to finish their handle of jim beam won the whiskey challenge but after the first two times they we realized we had a big problem Nobody remembered who won. It was different stories. People disappeared. Whiskey got spilled. Whiskey got kicked over. And it just turned into an all-out brawl at the end. Eventually, we recorded it. And I'm praying to God those recordings have disappeared. If they haven't, whoever has them, please destroy them. And uh, that, that, in a nutshell, is the Whiskey Challenge. The debate that we've had recently with with Howie and we've been doing, on our email chain, we're going back and forth to Howie and Rico and Brian and Mark and JB is uh, if it should be Jim Beam or if it should be something else. And after initially being you know, very staunch and keeping it the same, I've realized I really don't give a fuck. We can use whatever you guys want to, and I'll, I'll still wipe the floor with you. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, you, yeah I mean, you get your team drink, which you want, I think. What do we want, Wild Turkey, Mark? I like your suggestion of the Wild Turkey, yeah. I mean, it, it shouldn't be like really good scotch or anything because we're going to be drinking it quickly. It should be like, you know... I don't want to say shitty, but it should be you know, like you know nothing to uh, Hunter, Hunter really S. Thompson was a big fan of Hunter uh, of Wild Turkey, which is how I got into it, and I was like, I couldn't believe for like what a cheap whiskey, how not terrible it was. It's yeah, it grows on you. I, and I also, since, since we're older now, it's no longer two people to handle; it's now three. So we should be able to finish this challenge in maybe an hour. I don't know how no many more than shots that? is in a, a handle. I don't know. Who knows. Kept meaning to ask Alexa, but I haven't. <laughs> so, Ro- Roger, hearing about this whiskey challenge, what, what are your first thoughts? Are we nuts? Are we drunks? What do you think? I think that I'm not going to miss it for a million dollars because I want to see you guys pass the fuck out. Maybe Roger can be our can be our official judge, and he can decide <laughs> right. who won the challenge. So they're apparently. I mean, it's really who finishes it first, but I think there needs to be some rule like. 
you can't puke within five minutes of finishing or 20 minutes. I mean, there has to be something like, because if you puke it right up, then uh, was it really, you know, did you really consume it? Yeah, if you so, puke, you lose. You lose if you puke. Oh, I mean, you, I mean, look, I'm going to puke that night. I'm almost positive. <laughs> it, so let's just, we can't just say any amount of puke because I will at some point. I'm too old for this. I will get too drunk and puke. I know that's going to happen. Puke and rally. I'm just saying you have to hold it down. Puke and rally. Is it cool or what? I don't know. Yeah, I'll rally. Of course I'll rally. So yeah. just for the record, there are 41 shot drinks and a handle. Okay. What's that divided so by about... three? <laughs> <laughs> 13? About 13 and a... Th- oh, yeah, it's fine. We can do that. You need se- you seven that doubles? You can do that. Yeah. Seven doubles. That's what. That's a better way to look at it. That sounds a little less intimidating. <laughs> I'm not going to pass that. I'm just going to become a loud, won't shut Demon. the fuck up asshole. <laughs> fine. I'm both frightened and excited about this well the good news is that at pork fest we have two groups of volunteers one of them is called pork rangers which are kind of like um security but they also kind of help you if you get lost or get you know too drunk or too fucked up on mushrooms or whatever oh i'm gonna need them I'm right need them. but uh, then we also have another group called free aid which is uh, basically a voluntarist um first aid organization that has you know skilled medical people there that can help you if you are you know seriously fucked up and every year invariably i mean it happens there are people who who need those services quite a bit so um the, you got you guys will be okay i promise so this is in the will they be able to give me the uh, the iv treatment if i'm like really hung over um I, you know i'm almost certain they did have iv stuff there last year i'm almost certain of that just go ahead and order about let's see six of us times three about 18 of those yeah 18 packs. 18 okay. iv bags of whiskey okay i got that <laughs> We actually used to do that in college. One of our uh, friends did some like uh, medical work and would IV everybody up the day after. But yep. anyways, That's the way to do it. So, so this pork fest, it seems like it's in the middle of nowhere. And I, I know our hotel is a, a bit of a walk. Are there bears? Are there? Uh, <laughs> I mean, the, does a like, bear shit? I, I can't. I can't fly with a firearm. I, <laughs> D- does a bear shit in the woods? But yeah, you can fly with a firearm. I used to travel three weeks a month for like five years with, with my job, and I flew with a gun all the time as far as, you know, in my check yeah, luggage. You can, you can check it. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I mean, there are bears, but, you know, up here, there's almost no wildlife that's going to fuck with you. They're just as scared of you as you are of them. And I mean, while it's up in the middle of nowhere, um, you know, there are big roads between the hotel that you guys are staying at and Pork Fest. It's, yeah, you guys have nothing to worry about, I promise. All right. So um, I don't need to have it. My 357 Magnum on me for the walk home. Well, I mean, but the cool thing is. <laughs> you need it, but you might want Especially now when you're blacked out drunk. If you meet 10 people at Pork Fest, probably eight of them are armed in one form or another. Um, and you'll have people with, you know, slinging, you know, AR 15s and AK 47s the entire week. And you'll have people concealed carrying. I'll be open carrying my Colt 1911 the entire week, like I do every, every year. Um, most people there will be armed. So I think you're going to be okay. Excellent. Sweet. We'll have a lot of security. I love when. Yeah. I'm willing to bet. I, I'm just going out on the limb here. You will not see a mass shooting at Porkfest. No, no. <laughs> well, you might see somebody try, but it would last about half a second before they got it, shut it down. It would last no amount of time. Yep, absolutely. And I, I guess we can talk. We talked about it on, on League of Liberty uh, for the whole show. We don't need to do that. But I, I, and maybe it's just because I run into so many people that continue to make the same, the same arguments about guns, and and often you'll see these things like. Study shows that um, you know um, more guns doesn't equal less mass shootings, or and or like well, st- study shows that states with stricter gun laws have less mass shootings. All these things, and it's like, or that uh, there's not a one that I saw that was like study shows that guns don't actually um, cre- cause you know create better self defense. Like good, good guys don't really stop people with guns. I'm like. There's no study. There's no study that can show you that a gun works to defend yourself. It's not a study. It's a real thing that people do. And if you're being attacked and you have a weapon to defend yourself, what does a study matter? This is about rights. It's about facts. And it, 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 anybody that wants to get it, not about facts. It's about it's about the, 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 the truth, the truth, the reality of defense. And that is what gun rights is yep. about at the end of the day. Not just defense against bears or against someone breaking into your house. Those are very important things. It's ultimately a defense against tyranny. And anyone who thinks it's not, um, I don't know what to tell you. That's well, but, true. But, I, I don't disagree at all. But I think it's um, less the number of guns than the equal distribution of guns when they're right. consolidated just one group has them you got problems right. when it's equally distributed and you know and that, whether it's a big amount or a little amount as long as the guns are equally just dis- not you know not communist equally distributed but you know how he is for gun equality <laughs> this is <the> it, <laughs> it's important that not just the criminals have the guns or not just the cops have the guns if everybody has the guns you're you're in good shape 
Well, I mean, I the the 1911 or the Colt 1991 compact that I'm wearing right now, um, I have used one time. I had to draw it and actually protect my my myself and my fiance's life um, with it, and that's never been reported to the police, so it's never going to show up in a study. But that gun, without a doubt, has saved my life before. So, and that that's and why there's stu- no study that can disprove exactly. That. It's a fact. That's why it studies happens. are are useless in that kind of situation. And that happens hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of times a year. Period. Yeah, my, my, when I, I mean, my dad was a, a carrier at one point, um, and um, you know he, you know he had gotten into a couple of situations. I know I won't go into details, and I don't remember the details because I was a kid. But I know he was in more than one sin- situation where simply brandishing the gun got him out of, of of potential trouble. You know that 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 was enough to scare an aggressor away. Well, I actually, so, I actually had again to, that is not going to appear in a study. Yeah, I actually had to draw down on the on this group of four guys. I actually, you know, was on one knee. I was drawn down on them, and I was putting pressure on the fucking trigger when they finally backed. Wow. The fuck off i mean it was Holy that you, it was can that. you give more of that story how, how did this happen well it's a super super long story and really not that interesting other than the fact that we got time well i had four guys who were so it was really late at night uh, on a you know like a wednesday night it was in the middle of the week it was like two o'clock in the morning these guys were party i was in an apartment complex at the time this was 20 years ago and they were partying and drinking and throwing beer bottles and shit you know it, right under me um i was on the upper floor and so i went out there stuck my head out said hey guys you know can you guys, you know, chill out? It's too loud. Whatever. Got to go to work in the morning. And uh, so, you know, fine. Whatever. We'll do it. Five minutes later, they still weren't. So I stuck my head back out there. And uh, now they're much closer to my apartment. And um, and I'm trying to talk to them. Look, guys, chill out. Whatever. And uh, so they call me down there. And that was actually one guy that I knew. Go down there and talk to him or whatever. I start making my way back up the apartment and they're following me. So my girlfriend's on the phone with the police. She hands me my handgun that's always beside my nightstand. And um, they're coming in. I mean, literally, I try to shut my apartment door and they're coming in my apartment door. So I go down on one knee when they're in my fucking apartment and I'm putting putting pressure on the trigger. And uh, thankfully, the guy that I knew uh, finally saw reason and chilled him the fuck out and got him the fuck out. But it was a pretty scary night. Um, I mean, matter of fact, they were, when they, as they were coming in my door, they're oh, yeah, man, you got a woman in there. We're about to rape her ass. I mean, it was just they were wow. out of fucking control. And I absolutely have no doubt that I saved my life with that gun. Wow. Yeah. And I, I don't really understand even any of the arguments against, you know, against having the potential to stop an aggressor having that that power and it is power in a sense but it's it's an equalization of power for example i mean it doesn't it, you hear a lot about um you know unarmed men being shot well guess what I, I don't think those maybe they did i mean but based on the story i don't know if those guys had guns on no, them they, they were just yeah so they're just four men four men versus roger paxton and a female right. so that's uneven odds that gun even the odds well and they were that's the point and they were in my apartment so, right. I mean, there was literally nowhere that I could go. That was the only way in and out of my apartment on a two-story uh, apartment. Um, and funny thing is, I, that, uh, like two days later, got an ev- I was on a month-to-month at the apartment because my year contract was up. I got an eviction notice two days later. Wow. I got kicked out of my apartment because I defended myself in my own fucking apartment. Well, I mean, I, I, that that sucks and that's bullshit. But at the end of the day, you know, that's probably it. Probably wasn't a bad idea to leave at that point, right? Oh no, no, no I mean, question. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, the funny thing is, when the cops got there, one of the cops was was an old buddy of mine from high school. Uh, they ended up taking two of the guys to fucking jail. So I mean, and, and you know, they knew that I was armed. They knew what what went on. They didn't even write me into the- for that incident or for uh, no for that incident. Right? Yeah, that night they took two of the guys to jail. Oh, wow. So it, it was a, it was a big fucking mess. And I mean, I was the, that's the closest I've ever. Well, that's the only time I've ever pointed a gun at another human being in my life. Is this the first time Roger. you've told that story in a podcast? It's the first time I've ever told that story in a podcast. Yes. Wow. Roger Paxton. Making history. Breaking out new stories. Yep. I mean, especially for women, because I mean, I know so many women. And I, I hate to say especially for women, but I mean, any honest assessment of human biology will tell you that, as a, as a generalization, and there are definitely I've seen women that can kick my ass. The, the women that work their asses off and work hard in the gym, and you know, CrossFit women. I have no doubt that UFC women. There are plenty, plenty. Ronda Rousey would break my arm in half. Like there are plenty of women that can beat up men. So I mean, you know, but as a general rule, most women you know are going to be most weaker uh, weaker than most men you know physically well, and women are, are seemingly I, 
you know, Roger's wife is not one of these women, and probably a lot of the women in New Hampshire are not these women, but at least out here in Los Angeles, <laughs> the women that I interact with generally are against guns, against the concepts, against wanting them. But to me, what is more feminist than a gun, than a woman right. ha- be having mm-hmm. an equalization with the man? It, is the, it is the great equalizer without a doubt. It even makes a little pussy like you, Mark, as equal as, as, equal as me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, Mark, you, 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 mentioned, a, uh, you mentioned Ronda Rousey. I, if I had a daughter, I would want her to know how to shoot, but also to learn jujitsu because that's another thing where yeah. size and strength doesn't matter. Absolutely. And I would – any woman in my life, I'd want them to know how to shoot. I'd want them to know jujitsu. And if there was ever any threat, the best way to deal with the threat is like immediate, intense violence. A- attackers are usually cowards. They prey on the weak P- people. They think are you know they could be able to dominate like a woman. But if they're met with like intense violence, it's usually they turn and run. Yeah. Well, and my wife, um, you know, she's with my kids twenty four seven while I'm at work and whatnot. So she is the she's the protector of my children when I'm away. So she carries everywhere she goes when she has my kids with her. Well, even when she doesn't have my kids with her, she's always carrying her weapon as well. So we we take our our responsibilities to protect our lives and our kids' lives very seriously. So just so you guys know, this is awesome. Uh, little peek behind the curtain here for the listeners is we're recording this on a Thursday night. So my felony Friday airs Friday, the episode of felony Friday, we're talking all about guns. So last week, last Friday, episode 114 of felony Friday, you can find it at uh, lines of Liberty.com slash FF 114. It's with Salvatore de Janeiro. And we talked the entire episode about guns, gun rights, self-defense. And we also talked about, cause he wrote a fantastic article about, um, really how the feminist movement is hurting women and their ability to defend themselves by taking guns away. So this is perfect timing to be talking about this. And I think that episode in itself, maybe by the time that this one airs, that episode will have blown up and gone crazy and we'll have a million new listeners. Well, that was a shameless plug if I ever heard one. (laughs) (laughs) So so, so this is, this is kind of related. It ridiculous government bullshit. So I used to have, an alarm system in my house it's still in the house but i don't i don't have it like active i don't pay for it because i don't want the cops showing up because every time i see like the cops go to some place on the news they shoot the people's dogs especially since i have a pit bull you know even though she's the most friendly dog in the world last thing i want is somebody coming here and shooting my dogs because then next thing i'll be shooting them they'll be going to jail so but but the thing is even though my alarm is not activated I have to fill out a thing every year for a permit from the sheriff's department here because there's an alarm system in my house. You pay like some fee or some some bullshit or whatever. And so I'm telling my mom about this. And since the last school shooting, she's become like the most anti-gun person in the world. And she knows that I have guns because she listened to our Waco episode of uh, Conspiracy Square. <laughs> I'm blown away that it took listening to a Lions of Liberty Pride show for your mom to know that you, Howie Snowden, has guns. <laughs> hey, hey, man, there, there's some people that you just can't talk to them about it. It's like, you know what? It's not worth my breath. I, all all I know mom, is yeah. I'll never vote for a gun grabber and I'll never voluntarily disarm. But anyways, so I'm telling her, I'm like, yeah, the stupid thing I got to like – file a permit for the alarm and she's like well why don't you have it on don't you want like to be protected and like for the police to come i'm like hell no that's the last thing i want like first of all they're going to show up after something happens and they're probably gonna come and shoot my dogs and i'm like yeah i don't want them coming she's like well maybe they'll come and take your guns that's what they should do oh i just slept it off but i mean is mom gonna listen to this show? No, she she's not. she she only listens to Pride content. I, huh? <laughs> I I forgot what we talked about. I put it on the car with her. By the way, I expect your mom to send five dollars to us for listening <laughs> to that show because technically oh, that's you know. right, that's right. It's it's on me. I'll, I'll cover or, her. Or she's a damn thief. I'll cover her. But, but can you believe if I have to pay for a permit for an alarm system that I don't use? Well, and you like, know, why don't you just stop paying for it? And and, and who would want the cops to show up? There's nothing. I'm not prepared being armed to deal with myself. I can actually deal with the threat well, the police will come later and mop up and like, you know, do their investigation or whatever, but it's not going to help me. Yeah. The calling police the police just come to count the bodies. That's about yeah, it. Calling the police should always be an absolute last resort without a question, without a question. But how we, where do you live? I live in Leesburg, Virginia. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. See, that's, that's where, 
you guys need to move to New Hampshire where we've got some freedom. So let me tell you this. My, on, in my town, Milton, New Hampshire, a good friend of mine and free stater, Glenn Bailey, um, and a, he's a consummate volunteer. I mean, I love this guy. He's always volunteering for shit. He went to the trouble himself of getting a petition for the city to to vote to dis to dissolve itself. So we literally, I am going to be able to go to the polls, and I'm not a voter. I I refuse to vote, but I am going to vote for this because I can vote to dissolve my town government in New Hampshire today. Status. That's fucking you incredible. Do that. <laughs> I, uh, that happened. A friend of mine in New Jersey. I, was, I remember going to visit him. We were driving to this one town. He's like, you know, there's no cops here. He's like, the police force is so corrupt. Like the this, they just decided they voted to disband it. There's, you know. It's done with. But That's I mean, awesome. those, those are things that can happen at the local level if, if people actually cared and got out there and didn't just, you know, go along with how things have always been and stay inside the two party. This is how we do it. Go to the voting booth box and vote for the same old shit. You can make a difference. Yep. My name is Dale Kearns, and I'm running for United States Senate in Pennsylvania as a libertarian. I'm a concerned citizen who has had enough. I work as a project manager for an electrical contractor in southeastern Pennsylvania. There I manage large commercial and industrial projects. I'm a husband and a father of two energetic little girls. I'm running to advocate for a society where my girls have more liberty, not less. Will you support our campaign? Unlike my competitors, I'm not a career politician. I don't have millionaire and billionaire donors. I'm running for Senate in Pennsylvania because I want to take the message to Washington that we want government out of our lives. Will you let me be your voice? Let me be the voice that says we will not walk quietly down the road to serfdom. The voice that says we need free market solutions. The voice that says we need to end the failed war on drugs. The voice who will fight for the forgotten man, nonviolent offenders wasting away in prison, and addicts who are afraid to speak up and seek the help they need. We are seeking members for our campaign team. I encourage you to apply. We need donations to help us spread the message of liberty across the state. We can go on hoping for liberty to happen, or we can fight together. I hope you choose the latter and join me today. Find out more at DaleKearns.com. Paid for by Dale Kearns for office. Well, so I don't believe voting makes a difference. I mean, other than the, the wow. fuck you that I'm True. giving to the city of Milton, because, I mean, let's be honest. How often does, does your one vote count? Never. Almost never. And uh, and basically, it just gives legitimacy to the system, you know. And that's the problem with this voting. I mean, who whoever who always wins the vote? The winner of the vote is always the non-voter because there's never a plurality of 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 people able to vote in the con- in the community, whatever the country, whatever that actually go vote. The non-voter always wins because people are so fed up that they're done. And when we finally get that from fifty fifty five percent of people not voting and get it to seventy seventy five percent of people, then the people are going to wake up the, the people in Washington, the bureaucrats, the fucking parasites, they're going to realize that people are done. We've got to stop giving legitimacy to this theft and this murder and this bullshit that's going on. When we stop giving them legitimacy, they stop going away. Larkin Rose wrote the book, The Most Dangerous Superstition, and he's absolutely right. The most dangerous superstition is not any religion or any belief that you have. It's government. Government doesn't exist if we don't believe in it. We've got to stop believing in it. It, so, it, it, so Roger, Roger, ways, Roger. I, let, let me. I, ask, I, I, oh, so, can, can I just say one thing? Real quick? All of us want to jump this is, on Roger. Well, well, this is so funny. <laughs> I mean, how, I want to jump on Roger. This is so funny, though. Story. How ridiculous you do things in Virginia. Like Roger, you're right 99 percent of the time. But this past election, we had a race where it was, it was a, it was kind of a tie. But one of the ballots, like they had put one name, then crossed it out and checked the other one, and they're like, "Well, we don't know how to count this," and so it's a tie. And the way we decided the election was they like picked a name out of a hat. It was just like, I can't believe that's you don't do like a, a like a, a recount or like vote again or something. It's like, yeah, all right, I guess it's a tie. We'll just we'll just pick a name out of the hat. Out of the thousands of votes that happen <laughs> every year, one of them, one person in one election could have made a difference. Wow, big fucking deal. I mean, I love you, Howie, brother. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not, t- hey, people, I'm not telling you to go vote. Because probably most of you won't vote the way I want, anyways. But yeah, <laughs> right. no, it's it's bullshit. I just, I just wanted to bring up that we elected an official by picking a name out of a hat. Well, at least they didn't flip a, <laughs> that, that at least they didn't the, flip that's a, a better, that's a better system than voting. Right, right. There you go. <laughs> May as well be. I'm random. not going to lie to you. They, I mean, both candidates were terrible, but I'm glad the name that got picked was the Republican and not the Democrat. So, but, so who, I mean, who, th- that is what you said right there, Howie. If it comes down to that, what you know, pick a name of a hat, whatever. But I mean, how many elections come down to one vote? 
almost um, never does it come yeah. down to one vote. So almost it's, never. It's does the your only vote, one I've heard about. So we yeah, almost never does your vote really count. So all these people, I mean, and I, I am a member of the Libertarian Party and I'm active in the party. And you always hear resistance to that saying when you're you know talking to people about voting Libertarian, that doesn't matter. They can't win. But I mean, when's the last time you voted for somebody and your vote actually made somebody win? Never. It's well, never happened. Your vote has never made somebody win ever. Yeah. That's so a it's fact. My, maybe so like it, maybe like ten people in the United States. But it's, it's, uh, it's just the, the the truth. And I think when you start saying that to people, you can start to wake people up a little bit. And I, I gotta have respect for Roger though with coming at it against voting. But let me ask you this, Roger: the campaign that Adam Kokesh is. Uh, planning to run in 2020 for the United States presidency. He's running to win the presidency and then dissolve the government. So would you vote for Adam Kokesh? So quick shameless plug before I answer that. Um, one of the podcasts that I do on the Pax Libertas Productions Network is called Essential Libertarianism. And it's basically reading these, you know, some of these are decades old articles written by voluntarists in the 70s and 80s um, on non-political, non-violent methods to to basically, you know, get the, all of this vi- violence and shit out of our lives. So check it out at EssentialLibertarianism.com. Uh, matter Snacking of fact, ballots, nerd bullets. Yes, yeah, that's where that's where the, this all started from. Um, so starting next week, we're actually getting into the nonviolent series. Starting next, I'm sorry, the non-voting series. So that starts next Wednesday. So definitely check that out. But to answer your question, look. I have a lot of respect for Adam. I'm friends with Adam. Uh, We've known each other for a long time. We have, you know, we've done in the Fed rallies together side by side, burned dollar bills in front of Federal Reserve in Arkansas. I have a lot of respect for Adam, but Adam says he's a voluntarist, but yet he's running for political office. And again, it's giving legitimacy to what's going on. I support his message of running for not president, but to actually go through the process of being on the ballot and asking for people's votes gives gives legitimacy to the system. We've got to stop believing in the system. When so if people he was actually if he was actually on the ballot though, say he gets a libertarian nomination and he's on the ballot, you wouldn't vote for the guy that says I want to end the government? I don't want to say anything bad about Adam, but since he got out of jail, he seemed to get a little too hippie-ish for me. Well, Adam's been hippie for a long time. <laughs> I mean, I, I've known Adam. I mean, I, I am too, but I'm just saying it's it's a, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we go, it was it, there was an interview. I, the two hippiest people I know. There was an interview I heard. I was just like, like that's even too much peace and love for me. Yeah. And, I, and he, I'm like, he, he but, does go, he does go way back to being a hippie. And, uh, you know, we're actually working to, to get him at Porkfest uh, this year, along with some other fairly controversial speakers. Um, but, you know, like I said, I support his message, but I just, I did not, and I love Daryl Perry. One of my favorite human beings in the world. Um, we're, we're very good friends, but I couldn't even go and vote for him in his write-in campaign here in New Hampshire last year because I just could not stomach going to the ballot. Yeah, I, here's under, the thing, though. I, understandable. I, I, let I let Mark saying. talk. Let Mark talk. Yeah, I never get to talk on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, the only the only part I guess I object to is is this idea that if we just ignore it, it, it if we don't believe in it, it goes away. I don't think it's going away. Period. I mean, I just don't believe that because I don't think that maybe not ever. I don't know. Maybe at some point enough of the population starts to see things in that way that it goes away. But in my lifetime, there's probably only there's going to be voting and and, and democracy and this sort of thing. And, you know, I'm totally on board with the Rothbardian concept of like defensive voting. I'm not saying you need to vote or should vote. And I I don't vote in most of my elections because most of them I don't think matter. It's like, oh, a Democrat or a Democrat? Like, what am I even voting for? Even if it was Democrat or Republican, I'd be saying, what am what's the point? of? Yeah, you've got top two in California. That happens a lot. Terrible. It's terrible. Um, and, but, you know, like when something comes up and even then it's complicated, like there was a vote to legalize marijuana to, or to uh, or even a vote uh, going the other way. There was a vote to um, ban, uh, not ban, but uh, make acquiring uh, ammunition. You need a special license and you need to pay for a background check every single time. That is now California fucking law, by the way. And that's going to go into effect what? this June. I, yeah, no, that's a real. Are thing. you allowed to just and, buy uh, ammo for me? No, you can't buy ammo even for yourself we, without even like without private doing. sales. Yes, I'll say. Oh, I mean, it's probably illegal. Yeah, no, like I if I came to your place with a bunch of ammo and it's like, hey, yeah, I'll sell, sell it to you. They would. <laughs> if it if it's illegal at the store, I really feel like it's probably illegal for Howie. If yeah. Howie hypothetically <laughs> drove across the country with a truck full of ammo, you couldn't take it. <laughs> 
<laughs> let's let's find out. Let's it's make a video. Let's see if you get arrested. Um, um, <laughs> the, the point being, I, I, like, I, to me, it's like to me, it's like as long as this system is going to continue to exist, which I believe it is, and I get what you're saying too, Roger. It's like it's almost like a um, um, a circular argument. It continues to exist because we continue to participate in it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think in our lifetimes or even maybe our children's lifetimes, it's going to just go away because people, even most libertarians, and maybe not most, but uh, I'd say there's a decent amount of libertarians who are just like believe in the general concept of our system of government they just want it in a more libertarian maybe have it call it like a minarchist way so even even among that group of people uh, there's there's not like a, a widespread uh, rejection of of the general concept so uh, due to that I, i'm totally fine with seeing certain issues here and there or even certain politicians if you think someone is far more better than somebody else on the ballot i see no issue with participating in voting from like a sort of defense so standpoint. mark makes it clear that whatever the majority's yeah, doing mark's good with so, so, I, so I, you, I, you, you I, heard I, it here wait, wait, wait you heard it here first <laughs> that slave, regardless, you're slave, re- regardless of how much legitimacy it gives to to the rules and the bullshit and the violence and the theft that they're doing mark's okay with it because because the majority of everybody else is okay with it come on mark this mark man, I, I love you, i love you brother but come on just because everybody else is doing it doesn't make it right just because everybody Everybody else is is jumping off of a fucking ledge. Doesn't make it right. I mean, we are absolutely giving legitimacy. We're playing their game. We're playing by their rules, and we're wondering why we're banging our head against the wall constantly, trying to get libertarians on the ballot, trying to get libertarians elected, and we're getting fucking nowhere doing it because we're playing by their rules and we're letting them dictate to us how we're going to take our freedom back. Fuck that noise in the neck. You, you, this you is both, always my favorite part of you talking both to Roger make, when he you just both slams me. Excellent <laughs> points, but I want to uh, talk to our young libertarian. Howie, if you say I made an excellent point, you're just as bad as me. I, 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 I want to talk to our young libertarians here <laughs> and, say, and say whether we overturn the system like Roger's advocating or whether you know people participated in, in defensive voting, I guess you want to call it, whatever. Fuck it. It doesn't matter. I want to point you all to a book re- written by Harry Brown who was a presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party, one of the few good ones we've actually run, called How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World. Great book, and yeah. what, whether this bullshit system continues or not, you don't have to bow down to the government and do what they yes. say. This Read this here, here. and learn, no matter what happens, whether we you know subvert the system and take it back like Roger's advocating or try to use it to our advantage like Mark is saying, it doesn't matter. You can take freedom by the fucking horns and... Do it yourself, no matter what what happens. And that's so. why I'm and that's why I'm in New Hampshire. That's why I moved my family 1,500 miles away from the home that I knew for 40 years to move to New Hampshire to take that bull by the horns and and give myself some fucking freedom. I am tired of asking people, other people, for freedom. Fuck that. I am taking my freedom. And, and I'm doing everything that I can with it. Um, so you you mentioned Harry Brown, and I love Harry Brown. He is one of the reasons I'm a libertarian today, hands down. His writings, his speeches, fantastic. But again, he ran for president twice. He gave legitimacy to that system, even though he was a full-on anarchist. He did not believe in the system, but he still gave legitimacy to that system. And I just – would, would you know who Harry true. Brown was if he hadn't run for president? Yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. His how I Rod, found freedom. Roger, Roger. I, I, I read, I read how I found freedom in an unfree world before I started looking into the Libertarian Party and before I knew that Harry Brown was a presidential candidate. Absolutely, Roger. Look at the state of humanity, though. It's just in like the past couple hundred years that there's been any modicum of freedom. I I'm, I don't disagree with you, but I think it's kind of. I'm just saying, I think it's going to take a little bit to like shake this shit off. Um, I don't begrudge someone who votes. Growing up, like not knowing any better and all the, all of this, but yeah, I mean, we should be going towards what you're saying. No, I mean, I don't, I don't so begrudge Roger, anybody. Who, votes who because... takes people? Uh, on, I mean, I, I, I don't I'm know, with, Roger, I, like I I'm with you really. at the end of the day. <laughs> we don't need a government. I, I agree with you, but who takes people from where you are right now to where you know kids are growing up today in public school civics class? Learning about the government and how Odie. a bill becomes a law. And so that's how, a simple, how do you get from A Odie, to B? That, that's, that's you, a good, you get from that, 
you, you get from A to B by getting your kids out of government indoctrination centers. My kids have never stepped one single foot inside a government indoctrination center, and they never will as long as they fucking live, because that is number one. That is the best way, the quickest way to get this country and this entire world to liberty. Get your kids out of these goddamn indoctrination centers where they are shoving this shit down their fucking throats eight hours a day and then sending them home to you where you sit on your fucking ass on a couch while they're up playing fucking video games and not teaching your kids the fucking principles of liberty. If you've got your kid in a, in a government indoctrination center, I don't have any use for you, period, because you are nothing. You're doing nothing but making it worse. You are you are perpetuating the system. You are filling their heads full of nonsense and bullshit. And I probably just said too much. I've had too much alcohol. <laughs> Hey, oh, Cody, Cody, Roger, I love it. I love Cody, it. You better send, you better send a little Ruby to a Catholic school like I went to because 12 years of Catholic schooling, look how I turned out. Hey, <laughs> no, no, look, dude. I mean, look, I would, hey, I would, Roger, I would put my kids in a religious school and I'm an atheist. I would put them in a religious private school before I put them in a government indoctrination center any day of the week. Yeah. And, and I'm, you know, if, if Catholicism, religion, like the, the center is, you know, you believe everything. I'm like on the edge of the circle, just about to be kicked out of the club. And I would, if I had kids, I would send them there too. I went to a Jesuit high school. It was excellent. I studied Latin and Greek. Like it was, you learned about morals and values and how to think and not like it. I apparently didn't get all this government bullshit, like shoved down my throat. I never believed all the nonsense. I definitely think it's better to send your kids to a religious school or, or some other kind of school. Or if, if you have the so, luxury, ho- homeschooling would be ideal. Yeah. So, so, so my wife's curriculum. My wife and I do radical unschooling where basically our kids dictate what they want to learn, you know, because, I mean, childhood is, is meant to be cherished. It's meant to be enjoyed because eventually you're going to get out in the real fucking world and life sucks. Let's be honest. For the what, if they wanna, what if your kids decided – what if one of your kids decided they wanted to go to public school? What would you say? Uh, I would have, so there are, there are certain things that I will not do because, because I would have to take them to public – I would have to drive them to public school. I would have to deal with the, the repercussions of that. That's not allowed. Um, I mean – What if they – Wanted to walk or what if they arranged a ride to go and they said, I want to experience dad. I really think it's important to me that to experience we would, public school we, for a year and see what it's like. Well, I'm just curious. We would sit down. Uh, we would sit down and have that conversation. And I would tell them, fuck you in the neck. <laughs> <laughs> No, I but, would drink no, a bunch of whiskey. But seriously, I mean, you know, the radical unschooling, that's probably a little bit radical for most people, and I get that. But uh, I, I encourage everyone to check out another podcast on the Pax Libertas Productions Network called One Free Family. They just got into episode eight, and it's this couple that I know, James and Taylor Davis, that actually live here in the, in the free coast of New Hampshire. Uh, and they moved here as part of the Free State Project as well. They are – I mean, my wife and I usually run around when we're having issues with our kids, and we're thinking, you know, what would JD do? You know, what would James Davis do? That's, a, that's our mantra because these – these guys really, I mean, I have never seen parents like these guys. They have the, the amazing kids. So check out One Free Family at onefreefamily.com for, you know, radical unschooling, peaceful parenting. It's a, it's a, it's an incredible, incredible resource. Shameless plug. What, what, be- one thing about the best school. Part, I just want to say, uh, Howie, I just want to say uh, the best part, because I, I know where I'm going to put the ad now, because we, we already went past the ad break. <laughs> The best part of the conversation we just had about voting, not voting, is it's going to air right after an ad for a libertarian uh, a, a political candidate. Hey, <laughs> who's the, who's the so candidate? That I happened gotta... last time, and uh, Dave Kearns, apparently uh, is, NPA. Was, I was ripping the fucking Libertarian Party to shreds, and then we went to like Brian's vote about the Libertarian <laughs> moment, <laughs> Taste, tasting anarchy. Yeah. Was, like retweeted. Yes, that's what made me think about it. I actually got some a friend who. I guess he's probably a fucking socialist, whatever. He's like, oh, what's this anarchist thing? Blah, blah, blah. I saw they follow you on Twitter. And he's like – he said something like, well, you don't realize that anarchy and socialism like lead to the like same – end stage socialism. I don't know. lead to the same goal. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like anarchy doesn't lead to like mass starvation and death. Right. <laughs> well, I mean anarchy, anarchy is very simple. It's without rulers. That's it. It means that you rule yourself. It doesn't. And it doesn't mean socialism. It doesn't mean communism. It doesn't mean you know black clad wearing you know people destroying shit. That is not anarchy. That is Roger, absolutely Roger, that is author, you, that's authoritarianism and it's totalitarianism. Anarchy is without rulers. You're 100 correct, but but you got to take into context the accepted definition of the word and the accepted de- definition of the word anarchy. When people hear that word, they visualize people on the street dressed in all. In, a, in all black, breaking out Starbucks windows. That's when not what I hear, think. When people hear anarchy, that's what they think. So, Howie, you're not the sample size. Well, I, I think, okay, I look, think look, when, when I hear, when I, when I hear, when I hear, 
when I hear shit like that, I think, well, you can call me a flower if you want to. That doesn't mean he's a fucking flower. He's still a fucking skunk. I don't give a shit. What Has p- anyone ever called Roger a flower? <laughs> when I was, when I was a kid, it was before these like, world tell trade. About it. When I was a kid, it was before these world trade organiz- organization protesters and shit, like breaking Starbucks windows. When I was a kid, I was a fucking skater. And, you know, everybody read like peace, love, and anarchy. And you're just like, oh, yeah, that means no government. Do we, you know, people do what they want to do. It it didn't come until later, until like the nineties, I think, when this like black clat no, actually no. I guess anarchists had a bad name in the past. But there was a brief period of time where it wasn't really associated <laughs> with breaking Starbucks windows. <laughs> Three years in the nineties, guys. And everybody loved anarchy. They thought it was just skater skating and like smoking weed in the park. <laughs> uh you know, I've drank a lot too. God damn it. How how you have a whole other podcast? I know. So do I. I know. Because actually, we have technically we have a several other podcasts. Because we're about to wrap things up in a minute. We'll go around the, the room. I'm, I'm in a room alone, so that'd be weird. Uh, we'll go around and get some you know final thoughts from everybody. But as soon as we're done with this show, we're gonna keep drinking and we're gonna keep going and do a little bonus segment. We uh, for members of the Lions of Liberty Pride. Again, this is another great perk. You get to be in the secret Facebook group, and sometimes on the fly, I'll just be like, "Hey guys, we're doing a show tonight. Give us some topics." So we have a lot of people that put out some. A few things for us to discuss in the Pride segment. So we will be doing that as soon as we finish this program in a few minutes. Uh, again, that's available exclusively to Lions of Liberty Pride members. So please, please, please head over to lionsofliberty.com slash support and learn more about the Lions of Liberty Pride. Again, you give up one latte, one beer, one anything a month, and you can join the Pride and help us not only get to Pork Vest, but uh, be there, uh, have a place to stay, <laughs> have a hotel. It would be wonderful to, ha- to have uh, roofs over our heads and uh, that sort of thing. Of course, uh, for our studio shows that we want to do there, you know, if we, if we get enough funds in, we'll, we'll try to provide booze for that, for the studio audience. And, you know, everybody can, can drink and, and, and do this with us. That's what we're really uh, or, super excited or about, just, really interacting with people. Or just real quick to cut you off, Mark, or you can buy a VIP yeah. ticket at Pork Fest and you can uh, yes. join the VIP tent where there's plenty of fun going on and free drinks just saying that's where the orgy is right the vip time i will never speak i don't know what that is i'm just kidding this is, I thought this was a pride <laughs> is show this a pride time. show <laughs> no uh it's not that's why i didn't even just say thank it. god uh, my anyway. fiance doesn't listen to the show <laughs> it was just a joke anyway we'll, we'll but she does browse the, the forum so nobody say anything about these orgy tents <laughs> no, we'll keep that we'll keep that uh orgy not that i would ever patronize that. So pork I'm, fest is family no. friendly just say it <laughs> it is it is actually very friendly. pork fest Rogers is not what it sounds like right <laughs> roger's kids will be there and i will get to talk to them and convince them to ask him to uh to bring them to public school just to see well, i see can't, I can't wait to ask them that <laughs> because i want to i really want to see roger tell his kid to go fuck himself in the neck. <laughs> roger where where could we buy where can i buy a t-shirt that says go fuck yourself in the neck is that, Dude, is that available I, I with think, roger's I face think, on it Listen to your podcast and you say that like endeared me to you more than anything else. It's just the fucking best. So you can uh, you can get swag at the lo- at uh, the lava flow dot com slash swag. I don't have one that says fuck you in the neck though. So I, I should probably do that. Yeah. You probably should. <laughs> I do have one that says, um, "Oh God, what's my other catchphrase? I'm so drunk, I forgot." <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Anyway, I've got one that does have the f word on it. I just can't remember what the f word is. <laughs> Dude. What is your other catchphrase? Hey, this might this might be That's a this might be of. a break point, but I have something. Well, I have Roger here that well, want to let's, like. Let's 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 take an edit there, dude. Find out your other catchphrase. You can plug that. There's cause... no break point. Well, it, yeah, that's what I, I figured it wouldn't really be. So whatever, it doesn't matter. But I was just gonna say it anyways. But there's something I want to oh, talk oh, to Roger about. No, but I don't I, know if we I, should save it for the pride only or if we have time for a tangent. So you well, decide. Save it for the pride because I want to end the show right now. Right, so, sorry. I'm sure Mark left this in because he's too lazy to edit it. So if you want to hear what I really want to ask Roger about, you're going to have to join the bride. I think it would be better. If now I, now I, I'm going to leave, leave it in I, just because he's. I think it'd be yeah. better if you ask the I question said, and then people are going to really want. If you ask the question, people are really oh, going to join the bride. Well, it has to do with like Monero, Zencash, and uh, privacy cryptocurrencies. And people don't want to, you know, be buying drugs on the dark web and end up in jail. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Right. But I did find my we'll catchphrase on my right. shirt. It's what the actual fuck. I could not remember that for the life oh, of yeah, right. But that's on the back of one of my shirts at the lavaflow.com slash swag. Mark Claire just went and voted. What in the actual fuck? <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> say, Mark, Mark Claire's a statist, yep. 
So <laughs> you heard it here first. So actually, folks. one of the uh, you, I'm glad you mentioned that one of the essential libertarianism episodes coming up is why I would not vote against Hitler, and it is absolutely captivating. And it's a you know it's the whole non-voting thing, but it's absolutely captivating why this woman would not have voted against Hitler uh, to be elected. Um, you're not gonna you're not helping these Nazi Nazi accusations that are always thrown <laughs> out there, Roger. No. Now, we're gonna hear it here now. It's not she push, wouldn't have voted for it. Pride part. Push this to the pride part. Right. Uh, I didn't realize you were all right, Roger. All right. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Give this get get this man a tiki torch, okay? Uh, guys, any other final thoughts before we, we'll get into the pride? We'll do uh, you know we'll do that bonus segment. We'll look at some of these questions that people posted. But uh, any other thoughts for the public? Yeah. So let me speak, uh, and, uh, let me plug. Odie, I'm gonna plug or Roger, whoever you. Are. I'm gonna plug a couple things real quick. Um, so we've got yes, some new podcast on uh, Pax Libertas. We've got Anarcho Christian um, evaluating the relationship between the Christian and the state. It's Christianity from an anarchist perspective with lots of research and lots of history. That's by uh, Stephen Rose. Um, um, we've also got uh, ANCAP Barbershop. Uh, we've got six podcasts on the network at PaxLibertasProductions.com. But mainly I want to plug Porkfest. So, I mean, look, you guys know that the six main guys from, from Lions of Liberty are coming to Porkfest. We're also having Chris uh, Chris Spangle from We Are Libertarians. We're having Johnny Adams from Johnny Rocket Launchpad. Are Bat you and Chris going to fight? Um, no, we're going to hug it out. We're going to love it out. Uh, not even like a, wrestle, like a friendly wrestling match? I mean, Chris and I go back a it decade. Sounds kind of gay, friendly. Yeah. Chris and I first met a decade with, ago. With, we're, with we're oil? <laughs> Lots yeah, of oil? No. No, not so much. But anyway, so we just announced that uh, Backwards is going to be doing a, a mega concert on Saturday night at Pork Fest. Uh, if you don't know Backwards, it's Eric July's band. Um, I mean, they've got uh, names of their songs like Statist and, and Personal Responsibility. I mean, it's it's a fucking full on end cap uh, band. Awesome. awesome. They, Fantastic. Also, Eric July is going to be speaking at the event. We also just announced Ben Swan as one of our keynote speakers. He's coming out um, as uh, Dash is a big sponsor of the of the of Pork Fest. He's coming out to do a speech uh, about you know what's going on in the world of Dash and with his reality check. And just keep a, keep a watch out at porkfest.com uh, because we've got so many big announcements coming up. But you can get your tickets at porkfest.com. I want to see all of you guys there. Roger, is there a basketball court there on the campground? There is a basketball court, yes. Because myself and Brian McWilliams and Rico want to challenge Eric July and his guys (sighs) to a basketball game. Oh, that would be fucking hilarious. I would take video (laughs) of that. That is awesome. We have to do this. We got to make that happen. Tweet to him. Yep. As long as you know, I can play as long as long as people aren't going to be like real touchy about fouls. Real touchy. Uh, Roger's going to be the referee, so you ask him. Oh, all right, I don't think all right. Touchy about fouls. Well, as long as you're not how, beating how, shit up. I don't know. I don't know, man. I mean, we got to get you up to speed. I mean, Brian and Rico are pretty good too, and I'm I'm a good basketball player. All right, as yeah, well. no, I'm out. I'm out. I'll, I'll okay. be drinking whiskey on the sidelines. No, Howie, you and me are going to be uh, the cheerleaders on the sidelines along with JB. Ironically, we don't think JB can play basketball very well. Why is it ironic? Because of stereotypes. Do you know what? I spent <laughs> yeah. the night in jail in a cheerleading uniform. <laughs> uh, Josh, was, we're gonna, was, okay. This awful. is a teaser. Don't Howie, don't say another word to hear the story about why Howie spent a night in jail in a cheerleader's outfit. This is a true story. You're gonna have to join the Lions Liberty Pride. If that if that doesn't get I, I will this, tell you this. Get us over I will thousand, tell you to tell them this though. I, I have a top security clearance. I had to talk to the people about that, and they just thought the whole thing was so funny. They're like, "Yeah, that's fine. You get your clearance." <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. All right, Odie. Any final words? You know, I know. Well, well, it's not really a preview because uh, this will air f- afterwards. But uh, you know, go go click back in your feed to the last Felony Friday for an awesome show about guns. With what's this dude's name? He sounds sounds cool. Salvatore cool. De Janeiro. So uh, like he's uh, he's, De Janeiro. he's a great guy. I had a lot of fun talking to him. So if you missed it for some reason, uh, go back and check it out. Lionsofliberty dot com slash Lionsofliberty dot com slash ff one fourteen. Salvatore, whatever. That sounds like an Italian food. <laughs> He's Italian. My, Spanish, He's Italian. my Spanish name is Javier. Oh, nice. <laughs> no, didn't y'all have like Spanish class and you had to pick like a different Spanish name or something? Mine was Roger in French. I took two years of French, so. Okay. Yeah, there wasn't really like a Spanish Howie, but so Javier seemed that uh, all right, kind of close enough. All right, we'll tell more stories about our, our, our Spanish names also in the Pride. But, uh, folks, it's been a blast. It is time to wrap things up here in the Liberty Living Room. Do not forget everything else going on in this podcast feed. There's a lot happening here. This coming Wednesday, my man Brian McWilliams is going to be back. Uh, probably He'll probably be tired or hungover or something, and uh, he will be giving you the latest on uh, you know all the current events, all the 
pop culture leanings. He did a great show all about the Oscars last week. So we turn sure to tune in on Wednesday for Electric Liberty Land. Yes, I, my speech is getting blurry and stumbly. Just imagine how it's going to be in the Pride. And a little secret, we're also recording Conspiracy Corner even after that. So this is going to be a really interesting evening. Uh, and then, of course, John here is going to wrap things up next, next Friday with another edition of Felony Friday. Until next time, folks. Oh, Roger, oh, Roger, oh, oh, you, oh you wait, 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 wait. Real quick. What, I'm sorry. What I have an offer and a public service announcement. The okay. offer is uh, Mark. Mark never gave me back my How I Found Freedom and Unfree World by Harry Brown. So I bought another copy. And if someone who is actually interested in reading that lets me know, I will send it to a Lion of Liberty who wants the book. And the public service announcement is on Brian's Electric Liberty Land. He talked about how the whole uh, tour project is funded by the government. Besides that, I just want to let people know tour is not safe. If anything, it's probably going to make you look suspicious. Same with uh, VPNs. Maybe if you could come up with a VPN inside a VPN. I don't know, but be safe out there. The government's right. into Wait a minute. Nerd, nerd, let me say one thing real quick over. because I actually stole Mark's uh, how I found how I found freedom in an unfree world. Harry Brown gave, gave it to me. I never gave it. I never gave it back. That so was, that was actually Howie's. Yeah, it was originally Howie's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. The thing has been around. That book's been around. Who has it? Do you still have it, Howie? Oda? I still have it. Yeah. I bought I'll bring, it. I'll bring it to Pork bring it. We'll read it out bring loud. Bring it to Pork Ooh, listen to this. You, well, I don't, a really good prize for something, I don't know what, would be to sign that book. And that is the that is the book that start, essentially started Lions of Liberty. Not just the same Holy book, shit. but the same copy of the book by Howie handing that book to me so, hey, 20, the, almost 20 years ago. You can get everyone that to sign it and we'll, uh, we'll auction it off. You could okay. sign it at, at uh, Pork Fest and give it away to one of your live audience members or something. I love yeah. It. Oh, we're gonna, we're ain't giving that away. There's gonna you're gonna do some work for that one. That's oh, serious, you gotta pay for it. Yeah, prize. I don't blame you. Something I don't know about pay for I, it. I kind of want destiny. it now. <laughs> it is mine. God damn it! <laughs> well, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fuck well, you guys. Just, we've appropriated that property, <laughs> Howie. It's been it's been um what's it called? Oh, I almost said old schooled home. I always like, knew we'd become the foxes of fascism. <laughs> hey, look, it, look, that's that's property rights, baby. It is his. He's got the right to do what he wants to with it. Yeah, we'll give it away. Anyways, let's get to the pride. I've got that question for Roger. All right. We're going to the pride. Um, That's it, guys. That's it. Until next time, folks. Live long. And fuck me. (laughs) (laughs) I had to. Sorry. Fuck us in the neck. Guys, this is Roger Paxton, and if you're fed up with the government running every single aspect of your life, but you're not listening to the Lava Flow podcast yet, then what's wrong with you? Check us out at thelavaflow.com, or just go back to sucking up to the government. The Lava Flow podcast, striking the root every single episode. This is Chris Spangle, and I am the host of We Are Libertarians, which you can find in iTunes, Google Play, or at wearelibertarians.com. We are a podcast that brings you all of the irreverence that modern politics deserves by examining current events from a libertarian perspective. So please, check us out at wearelibertarians.com. Hey everyone, the Johnny Rocket Launchpad is Liberty. Each week we strive to bring you the best guests in talk radio. The Johnny Rocket Launchpad delivers weekly interviews of noteworthy politicians, experts, and activists. The Johnny Rocket Launchpad is bringing the party to the Libertarian Party and launching ideas in your direction. Check us out at johnnyrocketlaunchpad.com. You can hear me, Kurt Nelson, and the beautiful Heather Nixon talk about the ideas of liberty. Rock and roll. I just want to thank Mark, John, and Howie for showing me such a great time on this episode. It was so much fun to record with those guys. And I really can't wait to hang out with all of those guys and the rest of the Lions of Liberty crew at Porkfest this year. I hope you can join us. Until next time, keep striking the root. Thank you for listening to The Lava Flow at thelavaflow.com. Don't miss an episode. Subscribe now at thelavaflow.com forward slash subscribe. This has been a Pax Libertas Productions podcast.